Episode 127 of the Wilderness Podcast is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Wilderness Podcast. Our supporter of the week is Michael Arity. We're also brought to you by Audible. Get a free month and a free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash wild. And I want to quickly apologize. The sound effects that we normally use and the music we play, something happened with the files and I wasn't able to use them this week, so I kind of had to improvise. Anyways, enjoy. Welcome to episode 127 of the Wilderness Podcast. I am Dills, and with me is Deegan. Hey, how's it going? So what have we got for uh, to talk about this week? Glad you asked. We got the seed vault introduced into the game. What is that? Well, we'll go into more detail about that afterwards. But uh, along with that, there's a bunch of other random quality of life things. Nothing too major happened this week, though, at least in that regards. And then Jagex released a, I guess, a little bit of a funny video talking about their nomination for game of the year that we talked about last week. The EE mobile game of the year. Yep. And of course, we had the dead mode, dead man mode tournament happen on the weekend. And I was surprised. Went off without a hitch. It was a pretty damn good tournament. Yep. Best one yet. Actually, I think Jagex broke the record for the longest hour. The Ye- final hour was like seven hours. Because like they they were like top on Twitch. They had like over 400,000 viewers, which I don't even know how that happened. And they just kept redoing the tournament. Yeah. It was just doing so well. And they just kept doing it over and over again. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where they got the money, but they gave out 32,000 like four or five times. Yeah, Ninja participated. That yeah, was cool. Yeah, Ninja participated. That was pretty yeah. neat as well. And uh, yeah, they it, it was, you got to play a Fortnite character though, which was kind of controversial. Yeah. Sarah Brews were Chug Jugs. Yeah. That, that was one, weird. That came out of nowhere. So we don't really see, we don't know how to feel about that one. And then th- at the end of it, once you died, you got a roll. You got it like you had your own little loot box you opened up. Yeah. And it gave like rune coins. Yeah, I don't even know. I thought I think that's just for RuneScape three, but apparently you can get them on old school RuneScape. And if you just examine it, it says for future use. So yeah. I don't know what that means. All I know, it's taking up like eight bank slots for me because I got some for watching. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that they don't stack. They they're like each one takes up a bank slot. Mm, that's that's you can't even delete them. I heard I was reading on the subreddit. Yeah, you should have wait. Can't yeah. drop them. I don't you, know. you have to spend them. But the worst thing is, so apparently someone did some data mining, and you got what eight coins? You said, yeah. You said, but you need fifteen to buy something. Yeah. And the only way to get those extra coins is by purchasing them. But you can only purchase them in thirteen coin pack intervals, right? Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Like you'd have to buy two packs just to buy something for fifteen coins, but then you have an extra like tw- eleven coins afterwards. So a little controversial, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, why don't you say we we get right into uh, what you did this week? Yeah, um, a lot of work actually. I think I, w- I worked like, every day pretty much. Ooh, nice. Yeah, um, that good old uh, seven day grind. Yeah, last like thirteen days. I guess I had or fourteen days. I had one day off, but I don't mind because I do like like I like my job, so it's not bad. Not bad. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then I played some RuneScape. And anything, any any major advancements in that department? Kind of, well, kind of a bit. I um before that though, um I got two new games this week. Oh boy, here we go. One is okay. Every big anime lover is gonna like hate me for butchering yet another name, but Sekiro. Sekiro. Oh, I've heard about this. Shadows die twice. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Shadows Die Twice? Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's made by From Software, people that did Dark Souls, but it's not Dark Souls. The only similar thing is that the game's hard. Okay. It's not like Japan Dark Souls. It's not like there's an actual story. The gameplay is completely different. Like, well, it's hard, but like how you interact with like the guys you fight are like completely different. There's a whole stealth mechanic you can play with you know um super cinematic like fighting and stuff it like like they they did such a good job on like 
the environment and like just like it just feels cinematic when you're fighting people because it's <laughs> like if you're really big into like I don't know what you'd call it like difficult games hard games hard games such as Dark Souls and Bloodborne in most games from the NES era um Contra was goddamn hard what a tough game yeah I mean and Mario, like that game is pretty hard. You die, you die a couple times, and you got to start all over from the very beginning. I guess. Or Renegade, that was a tough game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what genre, like the Dark Souls or From Software games are. Dungeon crawler? No. RPG? I mean, there's RPG elements, but like, I don't know. Um, I'd probably say it's an RPG. Yeah, but I wouldn't be like, yo, check out this new RPG, Dark Souls. Like, you're in, you know, that's it's not, like, why people play it. I don't know. Anyways. um, That game's good? Yeah, games, I'm, like, really loving it. Um, Yeah, anyways, whatever. Fun game. And then I got another game called Risk of Rain 2. Oh, okay. So, a couple of years ago, when Risk of Rain 1 came out, it was made by two people like two college dorm mates or something and we got put on steam it's like a rogue like side scrolling like platformer game okay and it, w- it was like kind of fun like I-, I got it when it came out it was pretty popular and like you know it's pretty like there's like a speed running community behind it and all that stuff like it seems to be a speed running community for everything except for runescape no there's the race to get the first the camo top camouflage piece yeah well, that's kind of a meme there, there's there's even in RuneScape, I guess it kind of exists where it has like first one off Tutorial Island or first one into the Champions Guild. Did you know if you do Tutorial Island fast enough, you'll get banned? Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be too good. Yeah. Because like, the fastest method is how like the botnets do it. Because there's <laughs> little tricks like you can skip the um the fire making and the, the wood cutting stuff. You can like fish your shrimp and then use someone else's fire. And when you cook the shrimp, you can just like whoop. And go and cook. You you don't have to do, you don't have to interact with the wood cutting part of the tutorial. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Like little skips like that. Um, yeah. Fun fact of the day, I guess. Anyways, Risk of Rain Two is like super different in terms of it like being three D. Okay, so it's a three D. It's not like a side scroller. Three D side scroller. It, it, it's just kind of like it's more of like just three D front crawling. scroller. Well, it's like a three. <laughs> it's a normal game. There's, there's no scrolling in the game. <laughs> You're just in an area, kill stuff, get upgrades, all that fun stuff. So I've been playing that with my buddies. Yeah, it's fun. RPG game. game? Yeah, there's like RPG elements. Yeah, you like level up and stuff. But yeah, more of like a roguelike. Anyways, for RuneScape, I did raiding as always. And Zara as always. Any uniques? I got the I got one of the fangs. I forget which fang. They're both about the same price though, aren't they? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, so I got a fang finally. It's my first one. And then I got like a four man or three man dex. No, no, sorry, arcane. Oh, and, okay. And a Din's bulwark. <laughs> nice. So, so like solid. Those are like the two lowest. Sh- yeah, uh, rewards you can get, right? Yeah, but and that arcane, you're the one who you're trying to get me to raid with you, but I was not wanting to raid. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was telling you we're gonna get night in that raid. I think I was getting into bedtime mode. I was watching YouTube or something. I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, and then you're like, we're gonna get one, and you're like, oh, and we got one. And I was like, oh, I missed it on my 700k split. <laughs> yeah, we ended up getting the Din's bulwark and. So the one of the people in the the four mans had like the first item that we got a split on. It was his like eighth kill ever, and then on his tenth kill, he gets a Din's bulwark. He's seen two items; they're complete trash. But we kind of just laughed about it, and it was it was really funny timing because me and another person that like, was raiding realized we had never gotten a Din's bulwark. Okay. And so you combine both of ours, like 900 plus raids without see, like getting getting one like dropped. And then as we're talking about it, one dropped that raid. Damn. Yeah, when staked it and lost it. But <laughs> nice. it was fun. In the end, it was worth it. Actually, though, yeah. It's funny because I took a uh, chick, uh, 
familiar name from the CC to his first raid. And we got Dins Bulwark. First unique in my name and his first raid and he gets an item. Easy. It was bad. It was good. I'm just happy to see unique, you know? Yeah. Fill that collection log. I feel like I got other items because my PVM tab is almost done. Maybe I was last week and like the last two weeks have been one blur. Right. The rebuilds. I just need Bando's chest play. I'm using a fighter torso right now and, and place to replace the BCP for raids. Other than that, though, I have like max strength, like, except for an infernal cape, obviously. But I got the ferocious gloves and all that stuff. Nice. And then I need like dragon hunter lance and then like full justice are. I might grind for an Ellie and then go in for Inferno, but I'm not too sure. I might just settle for the arcane. Yeah. Save myself a lot of time unless I get like a Tebow split again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I had a really weird interaction or yeah, I was at the GE and there was like a bot that logged in and typed in some dude's name. It was like, like world blank, like 314 or whatever. It's usually the world I hang out in. Yeah. And then it was the guy's name, the bot's name or some random, some, well, someone at the GE. Yeah. And then it just said Scythe third age. What does that mean? So. And when I went to go and like add the bot to see if its name would pop up, it was already in another world. Okay. So it's just world hopping, saying a world in scythe dash third age. Mm-hmm. So let me let me back up a second. World 314. I like that world. It's East Coast, it's consistent. But one weird thing is if you go from a West Coast to like an East Coast server, or like because I'm scouting for different raids and stuff, right? When I'm raiding. I find that when I go to World 314 to scout, it puts me in a CC, but then kicks me out of a CC, and I have to re-log to get back into a CC. Any CC. Any, like, wild CC, whatever CC I'm raiding in. It, it just happens to me all the time. It's not, like, super consistent, but, like, it happens, like, frequently. Okay. And, um, yeah, there are bots that, like, will hop worlds, and they'll call people's names and what they're, they're like what they're wearing. You'll see like like the um, wilderness scout bots, but there's GE bots, and those people will get flagged and they'll be like set into a, a CC, and then like a couple hours later, like a, like a, or you know maybe thirty minutes later, some dude will show up with like those random stuff, right? Yeah, and I talked about the scam before where they're like. 50 slayer but they're holding like six bill worth of gear with like a pet right hmm. with like a pvm pet like corp or um zuck or something right so like the, the, the biggest flex stuff you can think of mm-hmm. but when you look up their actual stats it's kind of like suspect where it's like looks like someone just hacked an account nmz'd it and then got someone to just do a bunch of crazy shit on the account you know what i mean yeah and then they just transferred a bunch of wealth like maybe did infernos until i got a zuck or like you know or maybe they just hacked like a or bought like a high level or a high pvm account that Hmm. has like whatever anyways so that happened and i saw the dude and i like tried to get his attention to be like dude there's a bot going around calling your name yeah okay and so the whole lure is that, like, this guy with, like, a shit ton of wealth will come up. He'll be super nice to you. He'll chat. Like, dude, you got, like, Twitch or something? You stream? You have, like, a Discord? Like, you want to chat? Like, you're a cool dude. Add me to friends. We'll, I'll teach you Infernal. I'll, like, and he's saying this to you. He'll say it to, like, whoever's being yeah. lured, right? And they'll, like, be super friendly with you. And they'll, like, befriend you for, like, a week. Okay. Yeah. And, like, the easiest way to tell is that they'll, like, Dude, you're such a cool guy, man. Like, they'll say stuff like that. Like, we're like, thanks, but you're being overly nice, right? Yeah, you're being weird. Like, you're dick riding me for no reason. Like, I'm like, like, not me specifically, but in general, they'll like do that, right? Yeah. And, and then they'll be like, what kind of music you like? Yo, you should check out. Funny enough, like, I know it's because some dude tried doing this to me, and I actually found a bunch of sick bands from this guy that I still listen to. <laughs> nice. Um, they like really good albums. And then they'll, like, get you in voice and all this stuff, and they'll, like, chat with you for a while. And then, like, one day they'll be like, dude, do you want to, like, do an anti-lure? 
because this is what I do. And then they say, like, they'll, like, walk around in flex gear. Mm-hmm. And then, like, some dude will try and lure them. And it's, like, go to, like, Rogue's Den. Like, some really bad, like, lure, right? Go to Rogue's Den in the high-risk world. Yeah. And bring the Amulet of Avarice. And then trade it, but then they'll decline it so you equipped it. And you're skull. Uh, okay. You're dead. You, the bank. It's not a safe zone. You know, all all this stuff, right? Or they'll tell you to win It doesn't matter what. But the whole thing is that, like, they'll tell you what the scam. And then they go, but, dude, I have, like, the best counter scam. And it, it's ridiculous because they, they, like, they always fall for it. Just make sure you bank everything. Go to the, I'll send you a screenshot of which square it was to stand on. Go on, like, a different world. I'll tell you to log in. They'll drop their stuff as they're killing me, trying to get my stuff. You log in, pick up their stuff. We run, we split. That's the whole scam. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. And so when that was happening to me, that's when I tapped out. I was like, no, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to. Okay. Like scenario one, you're a hundred percent legit. And we do like these weird anti lure scams. Yeah. But. I don't want to ever be like tied to that one. The podcast too. It's a <laughs> shitty thing to do. Yeah. Um. I just don't. I don't want to like make money through scamming. Let alone like the like the portion of my banks from Tebow's being dropped in a raid makes me feel bad. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I want like my wealth to be as like legitimate. You want to make possible. an honest living? Yeah. I want to be. Yeah. It ain't much, but it's honest work. You know that that <laughs> that, that whole meme. But it's not even a, that's just a saying. <laughs> it's a meme. Um, <laughs> Everything's a meme. My buddy was like doing this because he had a Tebow. You know, he's like, "What do you do? I just use all of the Tebow." But like, so when they did this to him, he was making like sixty mil a day. How? Because like they they set him up so he actually makes money with this guy. Oh, so then you you can just call it quits and walk away with money. Exactly, right? All right. But what they do is one day you get a call on Discord, the guy's panicking like, "Dude, dude, 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 dude this is fucking crazy. You got to get here right now." Or they'll like ask, "What are you doing?" It's like killing Zara, and they know you're like rebuilding the Tebow or something. Mm-hmm. They call you in a panic. They get you all worked up to go there right now. You trust the guy cuz he's giving you so much money. You log in, boom, your skull tricked, or so they do something, get they get your Tebow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the whole scam happened to my buddy. It sucks. Jeez. You don't, you know, you play with fire, you get burnt. It sucks. It's, it's fine. He literally staked for another Tebow. All right. So now bringing it back to this bot. That bot called this guy, right? Yeah. So I was trying to get his attention one day to like let him know. And then the next day I log in. To do some hot bank standing, and I see him there, and he's in the same outfit, just bank standing. And I'm like, this guy actually might be one of these lures. Oh, yeah. So I went and brought like all my flex gear out, and I just stood there, and like random news would come in and ask me questions and stuff. I'm like helping them out. I'm like, cool, you know what? I'm actually doing something productive while I'm waiting for these guys to try and like lure me. <laughs> yeah. The guy approaches me, and we're chatting for a bit. There's level like 126 with really suspicious stats log in. He's got like um he's wearing full elite diary gear. Nice. Which is weird. Yeah. You expect him to wear anyways. The guy trades me like 20, 30 bill, like shows. I, you were there, I, like and you're like Yeah, I remember you mentioning it. I like peeked over. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what the hell you're getting tied up in right yeah. now. I'm like, dude, I just undiscovered this secret society, yeah. man. I was like You'll, well, tell, you'll tell me about it on uh, on Monday. Well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> yeah, the no. guy like shows me max cash, a bunch of plaid tokes, like Ellie's arcanes, like 400 dark bows. And you made the joke of like, yo, can I have those dark bows? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I ended up saying that to him as a joke. But the cheapest thing, man, yeah. like how much for them? <laughs> yeah. As if it's like a bank sale. Yeah, exactly. Um, But then they were like both like just like chatting, being like, yeah, we're like super rich and stuff. And then. The dude, I, I said something really stupid to the, like to the guy that was like showing off all of his money, and then he ended up just like leaving. And then I like told the guy, like, you know, he's like trying to lure one of us, right? And then the guy, he said something really weird, like, "Yeah, it happens daily. It's not a big deal. You can make a lot of money if you want doing this. That's what I do." So and then you're like, "Oh, you both are in on it." Yeah, it's like a meta thing. So then I just like banked everything, logged out. Yeah. Like, all right. Figured it out. This is some super weird meta like lures that are going on right now. It's weird. Do you think 
so the dude has like 30 bill. Yeah. Clearly he doesn't need to do this. That's a lot. That's your set, right? Unless you got a staking addiction. Right? Well, you did it to real world trade. Okay. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, do you think they do it for fun? No. So what they do is, well, yeah, obviously like it's part of the fun. They don't make, like, you can't make a living off of it. No, I know, but do you think well, like, you could like, if you're neat, just sit in a mom's basement, right? But yeah, like, but I'm saying like it's like this weird social manipulation. Yeah, where and if you already have that much money, obviously if you're world real world trading it, you're gonna want more money. But let do you think part of it is that they, that's what that's the fun for them in RuneScape? Where it's like a staker, their fun is gambling. Yeah, I think. But, like, I think a lot of it, one, it's the rush of scamming some dude, but it's easy. It's, like, quick money. Mm -hmm. But also, like, it's going to sound fucked up, but it's kind of a really safe way to real world trade. Because what you do is, like, how are the scam works out? But you have, like, a third party unknown account that's either been hacked or, like, just, like, a random dude, right? That will do the actual real world trading. Yeah. They're not involved in scamming. Like, if Jagex were to look at the account, it just logged in picked up an item and then left and real world traded it for like 800 bucks if it's a t-bow or something or like size whatever it is okay and but like there are accounts that are actually involved in the lures and scams don't nothing happens to them like look at all the dicing bots and stuff right that's the thing i was just, so when you first started talking about this bot thing and i talked about this before too that uh i had bumped into this one bot who was rune crafting in edgeville i made a video about it because i wanted to like I want to expose it. This is my big break on YouTube. Not actually, because I just threw it up there. But it was this account that was like a pure with 99 strength. And it was runecrafting. But you could tell it was a broken bot because it would all it kept trading me. Yeah. Every like two minutes, it would trade me. And then I, I was sitting there like, al not alking. I was like doing something AFK in the Edgeville Bank. And I noticed it would do the same pattern on a loop for like half an hour in the pattern but it was broken mm -hmm. like it would walk and then it would go to like bank or something and end up trading me and then it would teleport back to edgeville mm -hmm. and then do the same loop again so i made a video you can check it out on youtube under the under dills or whatever that's the only video out there so i just looked it up and the count's still on the high scores yeah this was months ago and it's got tons of 99s slayer hunter fletching crafting thieving herblore hp strength ranged Magic, construction, farming, fire making, cooking, fishing, smithing, almost mining. I've reported it and I tried to like get other people to report it too, and it's still going. So yeah. what the hell? Um, I think when it comes to like botting, like I'm pretty sure like the Jagex net is just for like real world trading and um gold farmers and stuff like, like that. Simple like bots. Yeah, and then it's kind of like thing. It was like if you ever play like CS:GO, where like the 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 bots, or the hacks, the cheats, whatever you can like find on Google are the ones that will get you banned and detected. Yeah, you have to go on some hidden forum, or have someone like personally make it for you. Yeah, okay, that too. Um, because uh, I I know back in way back when I played Maple Story, a buddy of mine somehow found this weird uh forum. Where he was able to download all these different hacks. And he would hack on MapleStory. Yeah. Which is like a, what a lot of people did. And I remember I, I would go on this forum just to like look around. But it was like a hard forum to find. Yeah. It wasn't just like a www.blub.onion. MapleStory <laughs> hacks. Dot onion. Download tour. It was some weird. It was some weird uh, like website. Yeah. And then even on the website, you would just look at it like, oh, that's fine. But then to get to the forum, it was tricky. And then to get an account on there was also tricky. But I ended up doing it. Don't recall. Oh, I got Counter-Strike hacks from there. It's when I first got this is when I was really young. And I'm getting hacks for Counter-Strike from that site. And it worked for a while until I rage hack where you just turn on everything. Well, I had an auto aimer. So it like headshot. And I had the op. And then I was staying in this place. When I was just like clicking and shooting people and it, was, and it just looked like I was good at sniping. But then there was a guy sneaking up behind me with a knife and I clicked it and my guy instantly turned around and shot him in the head. And the guy's yeah. like, OK, he's hacking. And I was like, damn it. Nah. Caught. Funny enough, our cousin, he loves hacking, but he finds good hacks, which is scary. 
Yeah, cause because he's, he's not much of a. I mean, he games, but he's um, he's a Fortnite gamer. He's um he's a Chad. Yeah, and not like he's not like he games, but like he's very like broy. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, you. Yeah, he plays like Fortnite and stuff. He yeah, plays like the, the trending. Head. Yeah, trending games: Minecraft, Fortnite, Apex Legends, probably now. Yeah, but and he always cheats in those, but. Yeah, I remember watching him and he and he's he's playing he plays servers where it's like hacker versus hacker and it's all about who has better hacks. Yeah, he he does like really weird stuff like that. But he should when I was asking him about it, because like I mean, if you're like, why? Why are you gonna just play games and hack the whole time, right? I mean, he was like really bad at them. No offense to him. Well, kind of. He cheats, so fuck him. <laughs> but um he showed me like the forum that he like got into. And like only 50 people had the hacks. Huh. I forget what it was called, but you had to know someone to get in. Right. Cause he used to say he would try to sell referrals. Yeah. That's some multi level marketing. Yeah. And we'll go into that. But, um, <laughs> there's more to that. Story. Yeah. That, 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 that's for another day. That's for like a really short episode. <laughs> there's really nothing going on. Yeah. I don't know how we got, oh, because it's probably something similar to RuneScape, where, like, there's, you go to, like, some sketchy Discord, where there's, like, one guy, you pay him, like, big bones, and now you got, like, well, not literal big bones, but a lot of money. Yeah. Slang. Uh, you don't give him, like, you don't kill hill giants and pay him <laughs> in hill giants. But the bones. cheapest hacks in the market. But I'm assuming, like, that guy is probably involved in it, that specific character. Oh, the, the, the scammers and the bots. Yeah, it's possible. Anyways, I don't know how we got on that tangent. What'd you do this week? Uh, what did I do this week? Lots of rune crafting. So I've been uh, I'm on that elite grind. Although this is the first time where I've had this like really big grind ahead of me, and I haven't tapped out so, like within a week. Yeah, so I'm still going on it, and I'm uh, I'm focusing on my thieving because I need to get that to ninety. I'm pretty sure, and I gotta get ninety one rune crafting. So really, I've been just kind of focusing on those two things, and then the odd PVM and raid activity when I need a break. Yeah, but for the most part, just been hammering hammering away on those. And this week was a lot of rune crafting. So I'm at eighty thieving. Yeah, which is nice. No, eighty one thieving. And yeah, I just took a break and found myself rune crafting. I don't know what level I was last week. But I'm at 88 now. Like 85 or 86, I think. Okay, so I, yeah, I grew like three levels, four levels, which is a lot. Like yesterday, I had 87 uh, room crafting. I had the whole day off. I mean, there's real life things I could have and probably should have done. But I was like, you know, I, I, I haven't had a day off like this in a long time. Where there's no work, no school assignments, nothing. Mm hmm. And I'm like, I'm just going to rune craft. I was like 25% into level 87. I was like, I'm like, I want to get 88 tonight. So I'm just going to focus on that. And then I was playing room world on the side, like eight hours. I spent rune crafting. Yeah. But how are you doing it though? It's super AFK. Like I was getting like 20 K experience an hour. Yeah. But I was like, hold And then it's, it's one of those, um, you know, have, you watch parks and recreation, right? Yep. You know, the one where Ben, it's like season four. He doesn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And he decides to make stop motion. Yeah. So he spends like a month doing stop motion. Then he goes to show whoever it is, Leslie or something. And he plays the video and it's like a seven second long video. And he's like, has like a breakdown. He was like, I spent like all like this whole month working on this. And that's all I, I thought I had way more than that. That's kind of how I felt yesterday where I'm like, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, Ooh, level up. Oh my God. I only gained 150 K experience today. Yeah. Is it 77 to 91? It's like over 200 hours at, at Blood Runes? God. God damn. Yeah, I, I think it is. Because I did the math and I was like, where I stopped at Game of Thrones, I could catch up. Was it Game what? of Thrones? There was one show that I could watch only while I was doing Blood Runes near max rates. And they would like finish at the same time. Like you'd level up and then the show I'd would hit finish? 91 and like I like if I like timed it correctly by watching I could get through a whole series uh, while like doing room crafting to keep me like distracted. I think it's like 200 hours. God damn. That's crazy. Yeah. 
if things continue to progress to how they have been, I I'm hoping to have 90 by next episode and I'll spend the week getting 91. So two weeks to get 91. It's three. Damn that. God damn it. Um, <laughs> I mean, that being said, I I have made like 35,000 blood runes. Yeah. Which is like over 10 mil. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the bonus, right? You get some heavy cash with that. But yeah, now I'm trying to find like new games because I have nine or 82 to 96 fishing to get. Why don't you do 91 and then boost? I, I might because I might burn out by then, but it's still 82 to 91. And how are you going to fish? Monkfish? I don't know. Why, why don't you do um barbarian? I like money. <laughs> I like I like looking at the bank, even if, even though monkfish is nothing. agility experience, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, I'm thinking if I'm able to do all these grinds, agility shouldn't be a problem. That's at this point. I should be able to condition myself to do agility after this. I guess. Cause I started at 82 rune crafting when I, when I embarked on this journey, mm-hmm. nine levels in that, which is brutal, you know, 90, 91 smithing, 90 thieving. What's another big grind. I'm going to have 90 herb lore. That's not too bad. Herb lore, like, I did 78 to 90 herb lore in like a day. You did like 16,000 potions or something, didn't you? Yeah, it was 13 hours straight. It was oh, fun. Jeez, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. I've never fuck had so much fun in RuneScape in my life. <laughs> I like, it was it was like South Park, you know, like the World of Warcraft episode. Yeah. And it's like, I did it. Now I can start raiding again. Yeah, now we can play the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. But I mean, on the plus side with runecrafting and doing blood runes, you get some crafting and uh, mining experience. Yeah. So going from 82 to 88 right now, I grew, I've grown a level and a half. I've gone from level 82 to 83. So I should be 84, if not more. Mining? Yeah, and I need to get 85. So it's like, it's free experience. not bad. Yeah. Well, with the mining, you can just drag and pickaxe back. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I, I like, ideally, I'm going to want to max one day. So I just want to get these skills up for the diaries. And then I'm that much closer, right? Yeah. Like 91 to 99 room crafting is brutal. But you're already at 91. It doesn't seem as bad, right? You're like really counting down the days. Well, getting 97 to 98 in any level or any skill is the is like so demotivating. Yeah, because then you're like one more level to go. You're not even there yet. But then like 90 to 99, you're like, this is the last level. Yeah. And yeah. you're like motivated. And like, this isn't too bad. All right, it might take me two days, but it's not bad. Yeah, because every 100K experience, you're just like, Never going to have to do this again. Yeah. It's that much closer to the, the goal. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree there that 97 to 98 is the worst grind of the of levels. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you just chip away at it, you'll get it eventually. But like whenever, like when I was doing what, like 82 to like 91 fishing or whatever, I did barbarian um, fishing, like with the heavy rod. Yeah. And. I really like I get bored just kind of AFK and dropping. So yeah. what I do is I brought like an herb sack, a big stack of tar. And in my herb sack was a bunch of like grimy guams and stuff like that. And then a pestle and motor. If, if I ever got like really bored of it, I would just like three tick for like 20 minutes. And then you're like, oh, this is annoying. All right, go back to AFK. Like that's kind of like how I deal with like the big grinds is that I'll break them up in like being and that's why I like I really like fishing is you can just sit there in AFK and then you're like I like I actually want to play RuneScape that's my issue with like the big AFK grinds is that like you get stuck in like I want to bank all these bloods I have so many in my inventory yeah but I want to actually play the game so but it's like okay I'll just bank them whatever and I'll go do lavas for like an hour or two. And then you're like wrist hurts or whatever. And you're like, all right, back to AFK. <laughs> but then like those two hours, it's like 140K experience. Yeah, it's big. And like it, like it makes such a difference. If you just like chunk it up like that, I find that like it's really not that bad. Like See, with me, as long as I have like a game on the side that I can do or like a, sh- a movie or something, then I'm like, okay, this is I'll AFK. It's no- Actually, for a movie, I'd want to do like thieving or something that's not super focus heavy. Mm-hmm. But like... Rune crafting bloods, fishing. I'm gonna want to play a game on the side, which is I play Rim World. So that's why I'm like, I, 
trying to find like another game to play too because I'm getting kind of bored of the ones that I have. Yeah. So I don't know. Look at my Steam library. I got uh, hundreds. Jeez. <laughs> See, my thing is if I'm watching a movie, like I have to AFK as much as I can because I get really into movies to the point where like if I ever watch a movie with a chick, it has to be The Big Lebowski because I know that movie so well that like I won't just like if it's like a new movie I haven't seen before, like I get really into them where it's like they start talking like shut up, shut up. Yeah, like oh, they, like snuggle up. Wait, this is gonna be intense. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get way too into the movie. It's probably like Big Lebowski or something. Something that's like, eh, it's a good movie. I've seen it like 30, 40 times. <laughs> Jeez. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. I don't have to watch the movie. And I know exactly what's going on, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I guess we move on to the news now because that's my week has been rune crafting. I'm sure I'm, I've got to be missing something. I always do, but it's not important. Maybe it is. I don't know. Who knows? Dun, 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 dun. So I guess the major addition this week is the seed vault. And the seed vault has been added to the farming guild in the Cabos. So stored seeds are separated by type and you can add your favorite to their own sections. So it makes it pretty easy for farming runs. It only stores standard seeds, not quest seeds. What is that? What, what's a quest seed? Um, the one that comes to mind is the Tranquility Garden. Oh, right. Okay. I love that quest is actually sick. You got to steal like spoilers, but you steal like the, the, the statue at Falador. Right. And then it's gone forever. And don't you have to like push it? Yeah. To yeah. yeah. Well, you don't do the whole like you're not no. like bar- uh, barbarian village. You're not like <laughs> shoving it for like an hour, but you like get it out of like you know the dead man square. This is the worst escort quest ever. Yeah, but it's really cool because you get like, I mean, it's a farming quest, but it's kind of cool. To, like you get all like the like the white flowers because the whole thing yeah. is like the queen Varrock was like, oh, I want a garden, and the king's like, all right, we'll get you one, and then. She wants all this stuff, and you have to go get the seeds, and you go and plant them. Yep. It's kind of cool, like, watching the garden grow. You get a bunch of experience for picking them, don't you? Afterwards. I don't know. I left it. I left it all. You do get, is it this quest where you get the white seed, the white tree seed thing that you can plant in your POH for the aesthetics? What? I, I haven't. Did I lose in- it? I forget. I I could be wrong. Um, I have a random quest item. I think it's from that, either that or another quest that I think you can put in your POH, but I don't know. It's not the Augustus sapling, is it? I have no idea. Well, I guess maybe it's not that quest. Maybe it's just a quest item that has just been taken up a bank slot for me forever. Yeah, white tree fruit. Yeah, but this is grown in the actual Varrock Varrock Palace Garden. You can pick it every five minutes. And these white tree fruit give you five to ten percent run energy. Oh, maybe maybe that's it, huh? Maybe I've just been wasting a whole bank slot this whole time. <laughs> I don't know. It's cool. I'll keep it in there for the memories. But anyways, so yeah, you can store any seed as long as it's not a quest related seed or quest seed, I guess, and that shall free up a lot of your bank space. It's pretty neat. I always welcome this stuff. The only thing I wish... So RuneScape 3 does this, and I kind of wish Old School RuneScape had it. Because we're, we're always limited on bank space, especially when they keep adding new items to the game. Mm-hmm. I wish with these vaults, same with the player own house, your costume chest or whatever it is, we can put like full mystic in and all that sort of uh, equipment. I wish you could... Like in the bank tab, you could open that up and pull stuff out and put them in. So I think you can't do that just due to how the game's limited. But RuneScape 3 allows it. It has a different game engine, though. Uh. So like the reason why we have such a little bank space is because if they add more, you'll your lag. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's why they have like all these weird... Like hidey hole stuff for yeah. like quests or clue scrolls, and it's just like I don't see myself using the seed slot unless I'm really low on space. Otherwise, it's just kind of a pain in the ass to have to go to the farming guild whenever I want to take out seeds. Yeah, like, I don't know, but hey, it's here. And uh, Mod Maz worked really hard on it. It was like his personal project he did. Mm-hmm. It was started by Mod Monroe, but they left, and Mod Maz adopted this baby. 
because he loved it, and turn it into this. And most of it was done in his own time. Yeah, it was his uh, tap project. Yeah, there is like make all interface introduced with it. it. It's really cool. If you care about like his thoughts and the whole update, it is on like the update section. Yeah, on the on the website. Yeah. I mean, I guess we, we won't really go into it because it's just him saying how great he is at programming. And it was no, talks about some of the hurdles he had to overcome, which is so it says like because it's kind of interesting. But from a technical perspective, the project wasn't difficult. The worst part was making the dragging and dropping work correctly. Anyways, if you're interested in that stuff, go check it out. So moving on, we have Google login on Android devices. So players on Android devices can now log into old school with their Google account via a new button on the login screen. And a new account will automatically be created if you haven't previously linked your account to Player Runescape. Yeah. So if you made your account without, you can link, basically you can link your account to your Google account. So when you're on Android, it's a simpler click. Yeah. If you want to do that. Hey, you should probably do that. Set up some unique, some, some unique passwords on both your Gmail and your RuneScape account. Get mm-hmm. a two-step on both of them. You're set. Well. You're set until you're not. <laughs> yeah. But pretty much, yeah. And then, yeah, the um, the BAF denomination EE Mobile Game of the Year. We talked about this last week. Yep. We made a little skit. It was, it's, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. Yep, the uh, polls have closed, though. So I guess we'll find out who the winner is. Yeah. Um, But I, I'll play a, just a quick little beginning of it. It's like three minutes long, though, so if you want to watch the whole thing, you can go on YouTube to find that. Mm-hmm. So here it is. So what do you guys want to do for lunch? Um, we could pull it in game. Guys, 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 you're not going to believe this. You've got 60 agility. No, soon. Uh, we've been nominated for a BAFTA Game Award. Are you sure? Remember that time you said we were going to get a Tony Award for RuneScape Live? That might still happen. All the time you told us that you got the Infernal Cake before Wooks. Listen, Wooks definitely cheated. I just need to find out how to prove it. Wooks won. Anyway, are you sure we've been nominated for a BAFTA? They must have noticed that old school RuneScape isn't a Battle Royale game, right? And we don't have an angry main character with a big bushy godlike beard and um, a Wild West setting, right? That, that's all true, but no, honestly, look, see? But anyways, when we did talk about the um, the game, other games that were nominated, like Brawl Stars, we hadn't really heard of before. Yep. Kind of went and decided to check it out. And it, it's made by Supercell, the same people who make uh, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Boom Beach. Is that the other one? They're all the same. Yeah. Um, this one's more like a MOBA. Mm-hmm. So you have like a champion and or like a character that you have to fight against. It's actually I actually had a lot of fun th- this week playing it. But the problem is, is I kind of really blew through the lower ranks. Mm-hmm. I guess because you're maybe probably playing against kids or people who are who don't play MOBAs that often. I used to play a lot of League of Legends stuff, so I kind of have the basics down. And I did, yeah, I would do pretty well. And I was having a lot of fun, but here's the issue. It's very pay to win. Yeah. So you have your characters and stuff, and you can pay real life money to, like, you can also acquire it in game, but it's a lot slower. If you want to be competitive, you have to put money into it mm-hmm. because you can pay money to unlock upgrades for each champion so they get stronger. Mm-hmm. So I will I literally will get to a point where I'm playing whatever character and then I'm in a higher ranking now. And I'm, now I'm facing the people who are spending real life money. They'll have the same character, but he'll do like almost two times as much damage as I do. So I don't, I don't stand a chance, right? Yeah. So that's where I'm like, oh, this is where it stops becoming fun. Mm-hmm. Which sucks because it, I was having a lot of fun up until that part. So what you're saying is vote for old school. Oh, hell yeah. It's not pay to win yet. It's not pay to win. Yeah. Um, I believe April 4th, there's gonna, there'll be a live stream of their like official announcement of who wins. That's exciting. On the Twitch channel BAFTA. So you can go watch the VOD there and see where just Jagex maybe. I don't we'll know, talk about it next week. Yeah. Even though if they don't win, they're not going to post anything. You're just going to be like, 
a it, year down the road. Whatever happened to that EA game of the year? They're going to actually just like erase all mentions <laughs> of BAFTA and like scrub everything. Just shit We're talking. Just have like, yeah, and so Jags was dumb. <laughs> and they're going to just like censor like all talks about this. <laughs> An upcoming change for Iron Man cannons. So pretty much, I'll condense this. There was a way to boost Iron Man experience rates, and it's based on, like, how the game... W- There's some really weird mechanics in the game that people don't actually, like, understand. Okay. And there's a lot of misinformation. Start off by clearing this, because, this, like, this is what... This is why they're changing it. Your cannon's accuracy is based on the accuracy of the attack style you're using. Yeah. A lot of people think it's based on your range, but it's not. Yeah, if you're full, that's why when you're decked out in full melee gear with the cannon, you're still whacking them hard with it. Yeah. And like if you're an obby mauler and you're like training Slayer with a cannon, you want to have an obby maul equipped it because that crush bonus like makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. But it also works in the opposite way. So you could wear like a Berserker necklace, Farseer helm, and like. Um, flowers. Yep. And you'll have like minus 64 accuracy or under that. Or you could just do, I think, splash gear and have mage equipped it. And so what, what happens is that your cannon will never actually hit, but it'll like aggro monsters. Right. So what people do is they get an alt account to, to wear as much negative bonus gear as possible, cannon stuff, and then have an Iron Man like barrage or something right yeah they'll do whatever because they're not the monsters aren't actually getting hit so the iron men are actually getting experience and loot from the from whatever they're killing and they're gonna fix that they're gonna change that so only if you're in like that negative threshold where you can't hit really Mm -hmm. they're gonna add a small chance to hit yeah um that's pretty that's pretty much it that's like the main that's the change that they're gonna be doing just to prevent Iron Man from, like, boosting. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. So, pretty neat. I honestly thought it was going to be something else when I first read this, but it wasn't. There's a lot of really weird things um, on how the cannon interacts. So, if you're, okay, if you're really interested on, like, how to break RuneScape and, like, really weird interactions with this game, there's a YouTuber I really recommend. His name's Rendy. R E N D I. And he's, he actually has a series called like Hardcore, like Potato Only Hardcore Iron Man. Okay. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Um, But the whole aspect, it's like, well, that's that here specifically. He like does like Monkey Madness one with 10 HP, no prayer. I mean, but like, it's not like him just running around doing it. He has alts and he has friends helping him. But he like, he he's known for. Having some of like the greatest or like most like in- like difficult achievements, lowest level fire cape, maybe inferno cape, and it's weird because like people say Wooks is like kind of like PVM god, mm-hmm. but it's like Randy's like the mechanic. He's like under the hood. He like knows how the game like works. Yeah, and he knows like a lot of really cool like bugs and like exploits. And he always will like report it to to Jack. Well, always in quotes, but like the you know when he talks about whatever, he's already reported it. Um, like he found out how to get like sixty k attack experience per hour using a ranged weapon what? and one strength, and it got patched like last month. Salamanders? No, it was by not by completing King's Ransom, but not by doing the thing that gets you piety. You you know when, when you do you know when you do that King's Round Royale like when you're yeah. fighting them, there's a way you can set up um you pretty much wear like max range strength gear. You like walk it's like you walk in, you pick the attack style you want with like melee, and then you like switch to your like hunter or your um cat like your the Kevit crossbolt, the crossbow or whatever, or whatever range weapon you want. Mm-hmm. And then it like it works as if it's a melee weapon, but it's based off your range strength. It's super weird. Like the guy, his YouTube channel is really cool because he's got like some weird stuff like that. Hmm, I'm going to have to check it out because that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um. 
he 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 showcased a lot of cool things with the cannons. Like you can freeze your cannon with interface stalling, and interface stalling is like clicking a prayer you don't have unlocked. Yeah, opening up a skill menu. People do that when they're poisoned on like a hardcore Iron Man. Yeah, then they'll do that to regen health and all that stuff. He he does a lot of cool things. He showcases like like fake logging out. You can have the game think you log out, which lets you interact in weird ways. But then there's also certain ways to fake log out that you have to do through like botting and AHK where you're mm. like adding like over like 10 friends a second for like a long time. Like, it, like he shows like these really weird things you can do within the game. Um, I don't know how I got on this tangent, but I thought it was one of the things he was showcasing in that series. Oh, well, I'm going to check it out because that sounds weird. <laughs> it, it's really weird. It and piqued my interest. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, if you guys haven't heard of him, like it's like it's kind of cool, like seeing someone like completely break the game. Yeah, that's that stuff's always neat. I've always been interested in like it's just in ton- tons of games like bugs and stuff. I remember like playing Call of Duty Four, and you'd find this like weird little bug how you can get from one map to another yeah. multiplayer, and you're like trying to like figure that out, and you're like on top of the map now yeah. and looking. Yeah, it's same stuff. with like Left 4 Dead One and stuff. You can find like little weird like yeah. exploits, but like. He like turns RuneScape into like what speedrunners at like AGDQ turn those games into. Yeah. Where he's like, I'm gonna clip through this and I'm gonna show you you can not get stunned by the gorillas and monkey madness using a cabbage cape. <laughs> like like really cool stuff. Anyways, um in other news, the winter of the sweep stay competition was spud guns. What do you win? Well, he might, you all, he's, they say they'll give him a Razor phone too in six months of membership, but historically. We'll check back in a couple months to see yeah. how that goes. Yep. Yeah. Um, Pures, affected by that EXP bug, smooth that ticket. Yeah, you're on limited time now. Yeah. They changed the uh, Hasidius teleport icon. It, it was an H, used to be a K. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. You know, all that small fun stuff. On to the, the juicy bits. Yeah, the big news of the weekend. Dead man mode. Mm-hmm. World record longest final hour to date. Add that to the, the ever growing list of Guinness World Records that Jagex holds, like most fish caught in a day in a video game and stuff like that. <laughs> and like original music. That's a cool one. Yeah. Um now it's longest hour. <laughs> Who who knew? Yeah. So, I mean, I know we said it was a great tournament at the beginning, but I'm sure you should know by now it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah. So funny. Pranked, release the ninjas, prank patrol. Yeah, got him. So, yeah, the Dead Man Mo tournament was bad. Before we get into it, do you want to talk about everyone freaking out over Torvestic and he manned? Yeah, we may as well. It's Yeah, that's that was part of it, and that kind of led up. That was before this. Yeah. And it's an interesting topic because it's controversial. It is because of who he is, not what he did. It's a Wooks one meme 2.0. R- yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think um, we're on the same page. So if you guys know what the Wooks one meme is, people will say like Wooks one for like random stuff, but it originated in one of the dead man modes where during the final hour, like, you know, the tournament was going on as, like, normal, and there was one person left in that final zone. This is before the 1v1s. This one was just a pile, and then people would just die because of poison and stuff, and then last person left would would win. And what happened was there was one person left in the zone, but, the, it, like, the final wasn't ending. And I was like, what's going on? And then, the like, the spectators found out that, Wooks had found out you can just get food and unnoted at files and eat throughout the the fog and out eat. But he like spent the his the dead man tournament getting about like a bunch of sharks and lobsters and stuff. Yep. So the guy eventually Wooks was the final person because he was just like kind of cheated the game. Yep. And then they killed him. They're like, no, Wooks, you're disqualified. And then everyone freaked out, be like, well, he won fair and square, but the and then after that, they're just like. We can disqualify anybody for whatever reason we want. 
That's our disclaimer. Yeah. And that's so that we don't have another Wooks one moment. Yeah. Monash paid him his own money, paid him out. Yeah. Um, but the guy who like technically won, like fairly won, won. But the whole thing was that what Wooks did was like he knew he was breaking the rules mm-hmm. and they like the integrity of the game, I guess, the game mode. Yeah, especially if it's a tournament. Yeah. And but no one really cared because it was Wooks, and that's kind of typical of him, I guess. Well, I guess I kind of gave an argument why Randy would be someone to do that. <laughs> but no, but like, yeah, we, you know, it's like, eh, classic Wooks, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's the exact same scenario, but with Torvesta, minus it being in the final hour and like first day. Yeah. So maybe. To go, so to go into detail, Torvesta is a YouTuber, makes YouTube videos. On RuneScape. Yeah, one of the most popular RuneScape uh, YouTubers. Yeah, and he got disqualified from the like the the Invitational Week. Yep, due to muling. Yep, and he said like what he he asked mods, and they said it was okay. Mm-hmm. But he got disqualified, so everyone was like, "Well, what the hell? This is kind of BS." Except, well, for me, so we're going to go into more detail. A lot of people might be confused if you have no idea what the hell's going on with this. Yeah. But he asked mods if he could play on an alternative account and, like, gather resources from that. And merchant. And merching. But then what he was also doing looked a lot closer to muling over playing an alternative account. Mm -hmm. So that's his argument was, like, I was playing on that account. I was merching on it. But then he was definitely walking on that fence where it's like, yeah. He's kind of building himself an argument because he had a feeling it might happen, I guess. I mean, I do the same thing. I, I'll forget to pay my parking ticket at school. So then when I see I got a parking or I, for, I forget to pay for parking, I notice I get a parking ticket. So I'll instantly pull up my phone and pay for the parking, like a $5 parking ticket for an hour. And then this way, I, I'm like, now I have an argument being like, but I did pay for it. I just the timings were all messed up. And yeah. now, now I have to pay for the fine and I pay for the. Par- That's not fair, even though I know I was. In the wrong. I mean, the parking fees are absolutely absurd at my school, but regardless. So that's yeah. that's the vibe I kind of got. The main thing is, like, long time ago, I kind of mentioned this, but mule, like when I was participating in Dead Man mode, everyone mules to the point where like it isn't like why why am I gonna get scalded and kill someone because they've muled? Yeah, I uh, need to start muling too if I want to actually yeah not be pissed off every time I die. Yeah, like everyone mules. And it's really annoying. And I like, I don't know if I said he did, but I definitely hinted that like content creators were muling just in general. Like they like most of them will like, wow, I have a full, I have, I have an abyssal whip. I'm going to merch it air quotes because my 10 slot thing is full. I'm going to try and sell for 20 mil. Yeah. Like, like they don't literally do that, but they kind of, you know, it's kind of like we're merching, haha, <laughs> you know, uh, level three that doesn't leave GE and has all my valuable items. Yeah, and like here's where like controversy is that yes, his his account he was playing a secondary account was like merching and flipping, but like let's be real, that account's there for when he dies, he can go back and regear from his account that's merching. Yeah, so he's not losing all of his gear; he's losing some of it. But he has way more gear on the other account. Yeah. So in the past, like he has like used alt accounts and other content creators do. And the main argument is like we should be allowed to because we're solo players and clans just they win. We're doing the same thing a clan's doing, but we're just one person. Yeah. Which is where it gets controversial because I totally get where if you die in a clan, you'll have clan members who will help you out. But I think the difference is that. Those are different. Those are all different people playing the game. It's it's so it's it's a weird it's yeah like it's I, a weird gray area. It's it's weird, but like because I do agree, it, it's kind of the opposite though. The best players in a clan will focus on leveling and getting like the quest unlocks and all that, and then everyone else like for like the, like the really good clans that win a lot like of these dead man modes. It's like their job is to do whatever they can to slow down other clans, but then also to get items for those people. Yeah. So it's like backwards muling where they get the items. They all utilize their deposit boxes. They're all playing air quotes fairly or fairly minus, you know, DDoSing and all that stuff. But what that's, that's another thing. And then during the final hour, 
they give them all to like the big boys. Yeah. And the big boys will like change their name. They like go incognito. And the whole strat is like, we got to get these, these guys that are amazing at tribe rating and, or the one V ones into the, the one V one brackets. And they're going to win for us. Mm hmm. Where a solo player will like, this is the account I'm gonna get into the one of you ones. Everyone like might know my name, but I'm gonna just put everything valuable on this guy and he's just air quote merch it. Yeah. And that's what Torvesta had to have been doing to get flagged. If he was just straight up merching, he wouldn't have been banned. Yeah. Because the merch account would have been buying stuff and putting it on to Torvesta. The merch account would have got banned, right? Yeah. If he truly wasn't muling in any way. The the other account would have been banned way before because yeah, um, so I think it's it's obvious to say, but there are definitely a lot of other people muling that didn't get caught. Oh yeah, for sure. He you know was probably made as an example. It's like you know the whole streamer favoritism meme. It's kind of the opposite, the other side of it, where like yeah, you're our favoritism in a sense that you're going to be under you know people are watching. I think a lot of it is that he kept skirting the boundaries every dead man mode. Cause it's like, if you, um, if you go walk, cause he, he, like that, the weeks of the invitational, he does produce like really good content. Yeah. Of like a day by day. Like there's a lot of good YouTubers. But like, if you just like look at his bank every season, it's kind of more and more sus, like a little more suspect, like where he has most of his stuff and he's like utilizing the deposit boxes properly. And then you're like, he's going to go PKing. But he doesn't have that much in his bank for some reason. Huh. Well, what happened to all this stuff in his bank? It's kind of been cleaned out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I I enjoy watching Torvesta's content. It it did suck that I couldn't watch any of his progress throughout the week. Yeah, because he does. I would say he's, I mean, he's the only YouTuber that I watch that who participates in Dead Man Mode. Yeah. And, uh. And he doesn't like, I mean, I watch like Mika, but he whines. He whines more than I do. Let's just say that, and that's bad. <laughs> so that being said, I was I was unhappy to see him banned. But when I'm like looking at it, I'm like, I understand why he would be banned. Yeah, but I also get why people are upset because they just like, well, fuck, I want to watch him. Who am I going to watch now? It's yeah, like he- most YouTubers don't. Most popular RuneScape YouTubers don't do it. Like Bodie didn't do anything this week. No. He went bowling, <laughs> bowling during the tournament. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and he probably finished. <laughs> yeah, he probably like had a couple rounds when got food. Like, like he probably had a good night while everyone else sat there for seven and a half hours. Yeah. So we talked about the whole controversy with Torvesta, but that was nothing compared to this tournament. I would, I would say this is undeniable, undeniably the. The worst tournament we've had. Yeah, like, because pro- the thing is, you could, like, from a view, from watching it live, I would definitely say it was the worst experience watching I, it live. Real talk, I tapped out at, like, the seven hour. I, 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 I started watching the pre-show, and then at some point, I'm like, okay, lots of issues happened, and then I moved to a second monitor, and then I muted it and just had the video going while I was listening to music playing a game and then i was chatting with my buddies having youtube up playing you know what i mean and then eventually i'm just like i i don't care i'm gonna close this and if you watch like the highlights or when things were actually going down it's an enjoyable tournament to watch that being said you're watching it live you're going to bed soon while the tournament's still going yeah so it started and again we had uh Ian Ian Spam, pure spam, pure spam. Sorry, but his his name's Ian. And then we had wow, I'm drawing blanks today. The other shoutcaster, they had was Sween up there. No, no, no. It was um pure spam or Ian, and then the new guy that they had recently brought, the clan guy uh, Revan. Yeah, Revan. Revan. Okay, so those two were shoutcasting, and then they had Madaiza there as well. Sorry, ex Madaiza. Yeah, a little slip up. Now Aiza TV. And then they had Archie, yeah, who was kind of like the uh, getting interviews and stuff, like he's filling in a lot of dead space when when it a <laughs> lot of dead space. <laughs> and so, anyways, the tournament starts, and it was it was good. It was it was good when it started off. It was fine. 
mm-hmm. and I was enjoying watching. There's some cool moments where like you had these two noobs who are facing each fighting each other. One guy was extremely under leveled versus the other guy, but he was still like level 70. So it was like a level 40 versus 70, but the 40 had an anti fire shield. He's running through the green yeah. dragons back and forth. And the other guy didn't have an anti fire shield ends up getting KO'd from the dragons. Yeah. Stuff like that was like cool. That was fun to watch. Yeah. And the final area happens. So they all go to their final areas to start taking down the numbers before they get teleported to the one V ones. One, one more cool thing was, um, well, two, when those chests were spawning, mm-hmm. they, they started adding in infernal capes and imbued rings. Yeah. So you can't just like trade them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I thought that was a really neat idea. I mean, they always had infernal capes, but they had like, archer and sears imbued for one of the chests yeah one chest you got two rings yeah so you gotta choose and um because what the strat is, is like the scouts are like runners for certain clans would tag them and run yeah and one of them like northeast of corp or something grabbed it and like ran like all the way down to edgeville and was just being chased forever yeah and then there a bunch was, of moments like he got away and then he eventually didn't but yeah like jukes and stuff and then there was another one where the one guy got a chest. They were all attacking him. He gets like entangled or something. Ends up running, but they're so they, they don't. They make the new mistake where if you get a freeze on someone, you want to run where they're where they where they want to go. Yeah, and they didn't, and then they got killed by the gas, mm. and the dude like ran away. Like that was pretty cool. The moments like that are very fun to watch, and they had a lot of those during the beginning. Yeah, and the clans catching each other, each other off guard, mm-hmm. random, just like. Boom, they like they do like the little thing where they watch each other. A little skirmish. And then like one of them just like pulls a switch and just clears the other clan. So there were some pretty good moments. And then yeah, you break go to the final area where you have to start taking down the numbers before everyone gets teleported to the one v one area. Yeah. Well, when they get teleported, everyone just gets one hit from gas. Yeah. So what happened was the people in Falador had um they hit the like one twenty eight number before the people at the demonic ruins and so they got teleported in and like a, like they just got all hit for like the gas wasn't cleared in that area mm-hmm. and they died yep and they got kicked out yeah they all they yeah they died and yeah. when you die and get kicked out your account gets reset yeah so that happened and then i guess the other team the get the numbers down lower and well the other team didn't didn't get teleported in yet they paused the tournament but they didn't like- pause it right away they waited a bit before it got paused. Well, once they figured out there was the issue, then they paused it. Well, the thing is, they saw the issue happen, but didn't acknowledge it for like 10 minutes. Now, I'm pretty sure they did it like super quickly. Because I, I remember just I remember it happening. And then I was watching and like and then it just kind of kept going on. I was like the shout. Nobody's saying what like did everyone just not pay attention? I remember I was thinking like, how has no one acknowledged that this bug happened? And then it finally did. But they're like, we're going to put this thing on pause for a minute. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. I think it came up to like, what do we do? Yeah. Funny enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do this. I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but I had like a kid go missing my, my store this week. Okay. For what happened let's, this week. Let's see how you bring this one right around. And I think what happened to them is what happened to me where it's like, what? what what the fuck is going on you know what i mean like they like everyone just died no okay what do we do and then you kind of sit there and like you have no idea mm-hmm. so for me guy comes up kids missing help me find him okay and i actually like saw the kid in the store i was like the last person to see the kid go missing mm. really wish i remembered this during my what happened <laughs> for me this week you know, like three, four minutes goes by and then you're like, what do I do? And then it's like, did you call security? Oh, shit, I didn't. I'm going to go do that. You know what I mean? I yeah. think it's something like that's what happened there where mm-hmm. they're like, what do we do? Bozo pause the tournament. We got to figure this out, you know? Yeah. So they pause the tournament and then this, this. So this is like four o'clock our time for 430 or so. They pause the tournament. Five o'clock hits. Now I'm supposed to go to my girlfriend's this night. I was going to wait for the the final hour to be over. And I'm like, okay, well, it's like five o'clock. It's half an hour's gone by and, no, and it's still paused. Yeah. 
and they were sending out tweets like we don't know when it's going to come back up but we're working on it so you're like okay i'm like you know what i'm gonna put it on in the car and i'm just gonna listen to it because i'm sure it's gonna pop up soon and then i can just kind of listen to the 1v1s and by the time i get to her place which is like an hour away i'll be able to finish watching the tournament yeah so i'm in the car driving for like half an hour and it's still paused and then the shoutcasters come and the shoutcasters just continue to talk and like kill time Mm -hmm. stalling for like an hour yeah or more because i was like i got to her place i'm like they're still talking it hasn't even started yet and then eventually i was like i was like you know let i just need to put this on it's you know i gotta i want to watch this you know i I do the podcast it's super important i gotta watch this Mm -hmm. and then enough time went by i'm like okay the fucking tournament hasn't even started up again i gotta i turn this off i'm like okay let's go do something yeah and um yeah they pretty much so what happened was a bunch of players got killed and then they didn't really have a contingency plan and they didn't even run a beta for this tournament because they said like oh nothing really changed yeah um and they didn't have a contingency plan for this so they had to come up with a decision of well these players have like all their gear is gone their like accounts are deleted what do we do so what they did is everyone that was affected by this bug by his game feature got base 94 combat stats and certain like, like just a list of items put mm-hmm. into their uh, uh bank but people that weren't affected kept their levels but got the same items put into their bank and level 94 if they didn't already have it did they get scaled up i i just thought the i thought everyone got affected by the banking and if your account got affected then you got 94 I don't think people got scaled up, but I could be wrong. But because like they'd have to log out the players to like it was such a clusterfuck. It was hard to keep track of what the hell was going on. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, the so the one v ones resume. Well, there's still more. If they weren't going to give quest rewards to people, but if you did get quest rewards like piety and stuff, you could keep it. I don't know. They weren't giving any quest rewards to people in the area had it um and then they're like okay yeah we're gonna like manually log all these people in but most of them didn't even get logged back in yeah it was like a, like um like two it? people on stage solo mission and skill specs were affected by this and they didn't get logged back in um a lot of youtubers and like content and twitch streamers and stuff couldn't log back in Best case scenario, half the people were allowed to come back in. Yeah. But it was, let's be honest, it was probably lower than that. Yeah. Once the, they resumed the tournament, two people said, fuck this, and they home teleported out of the 1v1 area. That's right. And they went to Lumbridge. One went and hid in his POH. <laughs> he went and hid. He's like, I'm wooksing this one. He went and hid in his POH and used his restore pool over and over again. The other one got caught. And then, but the tournament kept going. They didn't know this guy was in the POH. Spoiler, but yeah. And then the the tournament resumed. So yeah, after the teleports, um, one of the persons on stage, someone who's won some tournaments before, and if he doesn't win them, he usually gets pretty damn close to winning. uh, Manked up mage. Mm -hmm. And he's on stage. And he's apparently at some point is facing an opponent who's able, who's doing like four way switches and like pulling off a barrage while also typing at the same time. Yeah. So very suspect that he might be using one of those PVP clients. He was using AHK. Or AHK. It, and like it was shown like on stream, like the guy's inventory. Mm-hmm. And um, they show from like his perspective and everything. And it was so obvious he's using a- for some moments because he's four way switching, he's barraging, and then like eating while he's like shit talking. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, and then um, while the same fight's going on on manked up Mage's screen, he's he's his character's not even there. Yeah, because you can do a like colon colon render self, and you can make yourself invisible. Yeah, um, which is like part of the game. They have that in the game, but I they did explain it. But if I'm not mistaken, either for a PvP tournament or one of these Dead Man Mode tournaments in the past, they had it so you weren't able to do that i have no idea because what you'll do in a pvp um in pvp is you want to freeze your opponent and then walk on top of him because then your opponent can't see 
what attack style you're about to use and he can't attack you until you step out yeah so this gives you a chance like if he's praying melee like i can switch some range and he's not going to know he has to guess yeah but with render self you can see the the person on top of you yeah so then you know what he's going to be doing and uh vice versa he was doing that as well and from a casual perspective it's like why is he missing on his screen yeah and they kind of have to explain it but like it's such a weird feature to have built into the game that anyone can do. It makes sense because like screenshots and stuff like that and whatever, but they should really disable it for dead man mode. Maybe they should also probably have a dead man mode client. Is that, am I asking for a lot when I say that where you have a special client that you have to use for the final tournament so like no rune light is that weird to say like do you think that should be like a thing where they they have like a tournament client that you have to log into and then you can't like then maybe it can properly detect like uh ahk and stuff ahk but pvp clients bots because like the typical bots are like they have special clients right Mm -hmm. you're not gonna load load a rune light and then have like epic fish buddy 2.0 or whatever wow's fishing bot was yeah but um like yeah a little little bit of a side thing but they should probably look into that if they're going to continue dead man mode and pvp based tournaments like have like a it it would not be a bad idea competitive client as the story continues yep there's more so at this part of the the fight some players have been logged in for uh, quite some time and players started getting six hour logged. Yep. So they just started disappearing because after six hours, if you don't know, your character just gets kicked down to log back in mm-hmm. and you can be in the middle of a fight. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. It's to prevent like splashing and stuff like that mm-hmm. for like going to bed, like at least, you know, well, that that splashing thing is like a three hour thing because this the six hour logs always been in. So oh, okay. when you're doing the Guthans thing, I think it's just the way the engine is six hours. You just get kicked because you can world hop and stuff and that counts logging out. Yeah. But like, that's the whole thing with Gothans and NMZ is that you would set your guy up and you would get six hours of experience yeah. while you're gone. Anyways, he gets six hour logged. So then the Jagex starts telling people, OK, you know what? Log out and log back in mm-hmm. or you're going to get six hour logged. So they had to tell people to do that. So they had to pause the tournament and do that. Now let's fast forward to the semifinals. Wait, 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 wait. We skipped over one thing. Oh, geez. Going back to the boy who snuck off the POH. Oh, if you okay. watch the stream, you'll see 17 players remaining. And they had to like pause and find the guy <laughs> that, that home tallied out. And he's been at his POH. Uh, I've mi- I missed that. I got to go back and watch that. That's I don't funny. think I think they just show casters talk for 20 more minutes. Well, we look for this guy i bet you it's like jmods are literally in game running around yeah teleporting and stuff and like where is he and um and then they like rotten potato them but like the, <laughs> <laughs> he like was hiding <laughs> from the, like, <laughs> like a fugitive yeah that's 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 hilarious yeah but sorry go on to the semifinals that guy probably had the most fun out of anyone in that tournament actually though yeah <laughs> actually like no no joke so yeah, now we're at the semifinals. Manked up mage is facing Geta Fuiz. Apparently the, the fight's like neck and neck. Well, I heard Manked up mage was like way ahead of him. The guy had like 4 HP? Or was this when he got lost? So no, this is afterwards. So they're, they're facing, and then randomly Manked up mage just gets a full restore of health and prayer. Yeah, but... So I know... Was a six hour log when he was fighting someone and he had him at four HP and he got logged and he had to refight him? Or was that this fight? Because there's one where they're like both out of supplies pretty much. Manked up like. So it's this fight, yeah, but he also got a full HP and prayer restore randomly. He didn't drink or do anything. He just randomly went to full health. Yeah, because he was at like 62 HP and like 40 prayer or something. Mm-hmm. And then boom, he gets fully stat restored up. But the other guy was, like, almost dead. But it's still, like, it's RuneScape, it's RNG. Yeah. He could have, like, just hit zeros and whiffed, and the other guy could have just, like, outplayed him. Highly unlikely that, like, really unlucky or really lucky things would have happened, but it, Mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah, he ends up, like, full. People are, like, speculating that, like, 
because the tournament went on for so long, and with the rotten potato having to kill the guy at his POH, the game thought that the dude that was almost dead had died. And so it just fully healed Manked up Mage. Yeah, and then but before that fight could even end, this is where Manked gets logged. He just disappears. Oh, okay. So then he gets a six hour log. At least that's what they think happens. So the stream gets stalled while they try to figure out what the hell happened. And they decide to do a rematch. Manked up wins, so he goes on to the finals. And then in that final, Manked ends up losing, and the winner is a Fools member mm-hmm. named eo mary so congratulations for winning congratulations for being able to sit through this because this was like an eight hour long event you know how many like adderalls they had to be popping <laughs> yeah and you're already going on no sleep that week yeah so you're really hoping this final hour is a final hour yeah honestly these guys have to be abusing some sort of amphetamine not not like memeing playing runescape like doing that for seven hours straight but like the amount of grinding they do for like a whole week. And the thing is, is like you're sitting in your office chair gaming. That does not let your body wake up. If I because like when I did room crafting the day, I felt tired all day because I just hadn't really moved. You know what I mean? Like I can get not much sleep and, and be at work. I'll be tired, but like I'm doing active things. So I'm like awake. Whereas like in front of a computer, like I, I have to take a nap. <laughs> See, I'm weird. Like, I'm the opposite where, like, my body can be tired, obviously, but like, I need to, like, wake my brain up. Like, before work, I have to, like, literally, I go to work early so I can read. And I need, like, I need to, like, stimulate my brain because it's just, like, it's just, like, if I don't, like, I'm just, like, done for the day. Yeah. Or, like, like I used to, like, play some RuneScape and stuff before I like, headed out to work, but... Um, you know, moderation meme. You know, I don't, don't <laughs> want to start my day off killing Zora, but like, which I literally have, have done a lot. But yeah, like, depending on like who these people are, like, it's just like not like twenty hour grinds. Like, you're it's hard. I I'll get like six hour, five to six hours of sleep a couple days in a row, and I'm pooched. Like today, I haven't been getting much sleep, but I'm still getting six hours, five hours. But I'm just exhausted. It's been like four days in a row, and that happened. So I can't imagine getting three to four hours right of yeah. sleep and yeah. on top of that like i'm i'm going to school and i'm like walking around which definitely helps you stay awake and stay not tired yeah whereas like sitting in front of a computer for me prey flicking yeah slayer tasks that's the majority of like what these big boys do is they do slayer and they pray flick mm-hmm. for like 20 hours straight and they do some questing but yeah but anyway so that was that was our retelling of the event. Jagus also has their own, so we'll go into that too. But before I do that, though, afterwards, Moderchi went and was like, what happened to some of the the uh, players on stage and skill specs? Kind of called out Jagax. Yeah, it was like, pretty funny. Jagaxed him. So I'm going to play that now. All right, skill specs, another unfortunate story for this Dead Man tournament. What happened? Uh, I got Jagaxed. To, to be fair with you, Chris, so yeah, pretty, 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 pretty tilted. I mean, I, yeah, no, 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 like fourth time now. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I went when I first th- spoke to you at the start. I said to you, I was going to be, I'm confident, confident, best stats I've had yet. And then I'd rather think I think I'd rather die to a D spear than than the old servers. But it, yeah, it is what it is, you yeah. know. Yeah. So always next time. Uh, we really, we really appreciate your skill specs, honestly. So yeah, a little funny clip there. Um, anyways, I guess we'll quickly do Jagex's retelling of the events. Yeah. So first, they issue an apology, of course. Then they messed up, and these are the issues they found. So 8.38 p.m. GMT. This is the first issue we talked about with the Fowler final area, people being teleported to the 1v1 areas. And then dying because of the gas. Yep. They weren't marked correctly, and... The 1v1 areas are uniquely marked so that the game knows where fog should be, but majority were not uniquely marked as they should have been. So assume that the players in those areas were somewhere they shouldn't have been and instantly killed them. Yeah, it says uh, 93 players were killed. Yep. So they paused, and this pause can be manually activated, but it also automatically triggers if 50 or more people log off at once. 
Because of the deaths in a 1v1 and the subsequent logouts, the turn was automatically paused. 54 had logged out. 39 could be logged out, but the tournament was automatically paused, leaving those players in foul or jail. And I'm assuming those are the people that got let back in. Right, it makes sense. Um, That's what sounds right. They were not able to return at 9.30. So an hour after this happened. Yeah. They were not able to return players who were logged out to play, but we made a decision to try and afford the players left in the jail an opportunity. They gave them with stats and items to compete. Then they went to the 1v1 area to be joined with other players in the final, and they resumed and all that stuff. At the time we resumed, there was roughly 170 players remaining in the area. That meant meaning more players needed to die to trigger the teleport. Mm-hmm. Um, if you see on the stream, you see like two people being left behind at Anna Carl. Hmm. Yeah. And then 45 minutes after that, once the survivors from Anna Carl joined the Fowler survivors, they encountered another issue. Some areas contain three players. The cause is unknown, but we believe is related to the manual teleporting of the Fowler jail players. I'm assuming home teleport stuff. I don't know, but who knows? And then. 11.06. So about 50 minutes. Yeah, almost an hour later. Final hour meme, but <laughs> the 1v1 stages begin. So at this point, three hours has gone by, right? Or two and a half hours have gone by. Yeah. I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, no issues encountered. So during the first semifinal, the issue, an issue is encountered, which one of the players would be incorrectly marked as a winner was teleported to the final prior to the fight ending. And this was caused think uh, this was caused by the game thinking that the area was smaller than it actually was. The player marked as the loser ran to the outer edge of the arena. It was consequently incorrectly considered to have left the fight, marking the opponent as the winner. So then they did a rematch. Yep. 45 minutes after that. No issues. The tournament ended with no further issues. And they say the issues we've detailed would have been identified if we conducted a large scale beta test as they normally do, but they didn't. Uh, We made the wrong decision when we opted not to do the beta. We've spent today identifying possible resolutions, and now we need to take the time to see what is most viable over the next few days. The decision has the, the decision we make has to be the right one, and we need more time to choose the outcome that works best for you. So yeah, there's your dead man mode tournament. And the crazy thing is, is while this is going on, not sure exactly the whole team working on this. It is safe to say that Mod Ash, who was in the head office at the time, he wasn't at the dead man mode tournament. Mm-hmm. Enjoying pizza in the beginning. Ended up with him being stuck there. Yeah. Until probably like 2 a.m. in the morning trying yeah. to figure out what the hell, like what he can do. So that it, it sucks. It happens. And... There's our April Fools from Jagex. Yeah, April Fools was the Dead Man Mode tournament. But but like this stuff actually happened. Like where the the the, the joke isn't that the tournament went on for Jagex so pranked long. us by giving us a shit. <laughs> yeah, they apologize as all. I feel like Jagex is like abusive. <laughs> they just like. I'm sorry. Please don't go. Yeah, I'll do better like, next time. I promise. Yeah, we we identified our issues. We're working on them. Look. Restructured so that last time. Yeah. So this is definitely one of the biggest fuck ups in a tournament, mainly because there's so many of them. It wasn't just like, oh, the gas is one hitting people too fast. This one's like, no, there's like a list of problems that happened. I feel like Jagex. Oh, the old school PVP team started using their Twitter. Yep. And they had to like keep reclarifying shit. They'd oh, be yeah. like, <laughs> let me pull up the Twitter because it's funny. You show me this. Yeah. Like. They would make a statement and then they worded it so poorly that it's like, are you kidding me? And then they'd have to like clarify it. So when the issue first happens, they say, we're still investigating. We'll share more information when we're able to. Next, they say, we're aiming to resume the tournament shortly. A bug caused players to die. We're unable to return their accounts exactly as they were. The players will receive 94 base stats and a list of items will be added to the banks. We'll share more soon. Players who survived... And have base stats above 94 will not see their stats changed. They'll also gain, gain the items we give. And then they tweet again. Quest unlocks will not be included. We'll only be altering items and levels. And then they tweet again. To clarify, you will not lose quest progression. 
if you've already completed the quest. And if you look through their tweets, a lot of that is like, it is happening. To clarify, yeah. we mean this, not this. And when I say this, this is what we mean. We mean this. So, like, some of the issues that they mentioned, like, the final 1v1 area being the game, like, the way it was coded, was that the area itself was bigger than what the game was, so running to the edge, which it as, like, basically something a beta would have picked up on. Or, like, is it mean to say, but, like, a competent developer would have double-checked? Maybe. Like, what it, shouldn't you know big an area is to, like... I don't know. It could be a small mistake where they hit just hit the one instead of the two. I don't know. I'm assuming they had to place the actual coordinates down. It's not like... I don't know. It feels like a lot of the little mistakes are like if you're working as like a game developer, you probably shouldn't be making. But I could be completely wrong because I don't know much about game development. Dunning yeah. Kruger type thing. But, like, a lot of really easily avoidable issues. And I'm starting to think that, like, Dead Man Mode as a concept is too big. It's too broad. It's too big of a task. It is a big task, right? It, I think it's, like, it's too much for Jagex to do. Which is rough because the last few tournaments were pretty good. Like, the controversy were, like, DDoSing from clans. Which is, like, that's not really on Jagex's end. Yeah. So... Yeah, there's the uh, Dead Man Mode tournament. It, I mean, you watch the highlights and it would be enjoyable to watch. But if you watch the actual tournament, it was grueling. Yeah, like, I tapped out after like hours. I I I tapped out after I don't know a, a long time. <laughs> yeah, I like was just like yeah. So that's and, and the thing is is like you no, know, we decided to record today, which is April Fool's Day, because I'm like, oh, Jagex always does something for April Fools. Instead, they came up with this dev blog, which was like not they did nothing right yeah so it's kind of it's just like i don't know it's a weird year so the year seventh year yeah it's the year seven here's the start of it no but like in all all seriousness though like if they want this like dead man mode to really be a thing and they did tease beforehand that like they have a really big project that's bigger than dead man mode coming up <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh Jesus! We That's talked right. about that. They teased it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, fix all the issues here. Do an in-house test. Even even if they, like set up your own botnet and fill it up with bots and have them run around and like do something to make sure. Like actually QA test because they don't they don't QA test quests really. We QA test them. Yeah. Watch Randy. Where he, like, shows you how you can lose a pet forever doing Death to Dorgashun. Huh. Throwing his name out there a lot. But, like, he, like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of really obscure bugs in the game, but then also game-breaking stuff that happens in this game mode. But then it's also, like, I really feel like if they want to make this way more legit, they need a tournament client, but they can't really make one because they don't have the the they can't make power. their own client. Their own client crashes all the time. I just don't use it. Nobody uses it. It doesn't work that well. Like mm. it will like just hard crash a lot. And that's why people are using third parties. So yeah, it's a bit of a shit show. Really, that's that was the news of the week, right? Yeah. So fun stuff. Oh, uh, so I thought I should wrap that up before we head into teleporting back in time. Yeah, this is normally where we would go back and talk about what updates happened 10 years ago. Nothing happened this week either. So we will revisit it next week, which means we will hop right into lore of the week. There is a man who has been around RuneScape for a very long time. Some of the most biggest events that happened on Gilinor, he was there to witness it. And quite often, he changed the events himself. Many of his stories are of legends passed down through generations, found written in books, but there are very little actual accounts from a first-person perspective. That being said, the first known entry of this man dates back to the Third Age. He was a warrior who fought for all sides of, of battles during the Third Age. Many called him a turncloak. Others called him a one-man army. Eventually, this man had met in person the god Guthix himself. They quickly fell for each other and made love to one another. 
This man was pregnated and knew it would be too hard to raise an infant during these times of war. Guthix was forced to cause the gods to make peace with one another if the two were going to raise a child in a proper world. This man then gave birth to the druids of Taverly. The druids never met Guthix, but they pray for his return one day. Later, stories recounted this man conflicting with the dragonkin. After deciding not to slay the entire dragonkin race, he decided instead to slay the dragons that these dragonkin raised. He found four green dragons and slayed three of them, made love to the fourth one, and soon became impregnated. Three days later, this man gave birth to General Grardor. Unsatisfied with his work, he decided to retreat and go to the city of Lumbridge. In Lumbridge, he learned he could create a portal that could teleport others from one area into Lumbridge himself. He then created this island, which he used as a machine that would spit out cute noobs into the world of Gilinor. Once completion, this man sat outside the gates of Lumbridge and watched as the machine spit out hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cute noobs. He then tinkered with the machine, and instead of spitting out just cute noobs, it would also spit out robots that looked identical to the cute noobs, but would soon destroy the economy, causing a drought within the game, within RuneScape, the world Gilinor, within the world of Gilinor. Bored of his work, he decided to go off and manipulate some of the laws within RuneScape. He removed the ability from people to fight each other, which many didn't think was even possible, but you know, he went ahead and did it anyways. And he also prevented people from trading each other. Riots began in Falador, causing the end of this madman. This world that went from a mix of different kingdoms run with democracies and dictatorships, but somehow this one man claimed the whole world as his own, where he ran it in a very... A very poor way. Anyways, eventually Reddit was created and then people started doing stuff on there about this world. And now we have this guy who stands outside of Lumbridge and watches everything just go to shit. We hate him because we ain't him. This week for lore was hate us because saint us. Jax didn't really have a April Fool's event this year, so we decided to kind of make up for it a little bit by helping them out. Anyways, we, we resume with our normal programming next week. And now that we're back, we will take a strip to that grand exchange where we get to tell you about some of the, I guess, sellout methods we got going on. Yeah, the the flip, the merching. Yeah, the merching. The, the, the muling. It's terrible merching, though. And muling. Um, so anyways, we got Audible. So if you like Audible or auto, audio books, podcasts, and st- whatever it is, you, you should go check out uh, Audible. Go, that's audibletrial.com slash wild. We get a free month and a free audiobook. If you like to read and you don't, or maybe you don't have time to read, but you want to read, those do a pretty good job. Yep. Uh, the narrators are pretty damn good. So definitely go check it out. Audibletrial.com slash wild. And you can also support the show directly by going to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the wilderness podcast. And our supporter of the week is Michael Arity. Not probably not pronouncing that one right but anyways thank you very much for supporting the show we greatly appreciate it i think i teased last week about having these bonus episodes coming out in the near future and things seem to be going good i got two weeks left of school and then my time really opens up so i have i'm in talks with a few people right now about trying to set something up and flee i mean if hopefully this month in april i can get one out of there that'd be awesome but it yep. depends on schedules and all that fun stuff so just waiting on that yeah, and then the stuff we got going on with the show, we got a Jeopardy tournament that'll either be at the end of this month or next month. I uh, just got to figure out an actual time that I'll be able to do it. It's crazy with school right now because it's the last two weeks or three weeks of it. And then after that, I'm trying to find a job within the school itself. So it's kind of crazy. And I don't want to schedule anything on like a weekend if I'm going to be tied up. That, But I'm hoping that's going to I'm going to f- have more information about what what I'm going to be free this month. And then I can set it up for the end of the month or beginning of next month. But yeah, Jeopardy event. You can win a bunch of money. And it's just like the game show Jeopardy, but all old school RuneScape questions. We are also got a little book club going on right now. It's a, it's a going a bit slower just because of schooling and stuff. I haven't been able to sit down and read them and it doesn't matter. But if you want to come discuss some of the uh, RuneScape trilogy novels written by T.S. Church, you can do that in our Discord server at the book club. And we are reading the first book, which is Betrayal at Falador. It's a pretty good book. I'm enjoying it. It's definitely just a fantasy book set in a runescape world so i mean you could read it and not have ever played runescape and still enjoy it so i definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested in that stuff i guess the last thing is this little thing that i got 
getting planned. We, me and Deegan have been talking about it. This, like, uh, I guess it's the type of stream we want to start doing. These, uh, these streams. Yeah. And I've, so I've been setting that up on the weekend. I did a little test run today. And still a few more things I got to tinker with. But my idea was, or our idea was, would be basically like kind of like a RuneScape show. I, okay, so the idea was basically your typical morning radio show meets like a podcast like it's an in-between of both of those Mm -hmm. so it's a runescape stream but it's gonna be less focused on this is what i'm doing in game and more focused on just talking about runescape listening to some chill music but then also having people come on yeah and talk with us on our on on discord but like having a one-on-one conversation for like 10 15 minutes however long just talking about runescape stuff and then bringing other people in instead as well like swapping them out yeah so it's kind of like a um more yeah. like a community-based like talk show where we we could set topics for the day if we want to yeah that is a possibility always but also the main focus is like relax start your day or end your night depending where you are but come in chat you know discuss yeah it's supposed to be like a a mix of a podcast of like this here and like a morning show where they yeah. just kind of talk about like topical things going on yeah. wherever it is and then taking in callers and stuff. So that seems like it'd be fun. And I, I want it. I'm I got again, I got to figure out a schedule, but I would like to do it sometime in the morning, a couple times a week. Deegan would probably take other times. So I've been tweaking with that. So that's interested. If you're interested in that and then keep your eyes and ears out. But I'm thinking this week I might actually tr- sit down and figure out what schedule would actually work consistently up until the summer, at least until school's done. And yeah, if you want to come hang out with us in game, you can go to Wild CC. Our email is the wilderness podcast at gmail.com. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash the wilderness podcast. And our Twitter is at the wilderness RS. We also have a Discord. You can join that through Twitter or Facebook, or you can bug one of us instead. We'll get you a link to come hang out there. And Deegan, you got your stuff? Twitch, Twitter, Deegan RS. And I was testing out these streams on my Twitch, which is The Dills. So twitch.tv slash The Dills. And yeah, that basically wraps it up. A quick little shout out to Raw Arrow this week because he hooked me up with a bond, which mm-hmm. I am going to be using for the uh, Jeopardy event because uh, along with like him as well as Bail O'Hay, who gave me like, give me 100 mil to have for events. Yeah. And we've used 25 mil. All of it. No, there's uh, we still got a bu- big chunk left, which is what I'm going to use for the Jeopardy thing. Yeah. Funny enough, Raw also gave me a bond a bit ago. It was intended for the raid event. Right. But due to certain circumstances, it wasn't appropriate to give one away. Fair enough. Um, I, I still my bank. I still don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I'm obviously going to give it to someone, but. We could tack onto one of your giveaways or like maybe like a maybe the radio show once we start that up. Yeah, yeah. That's um true. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with it. So yeah, a double shout out to him because he's giving us some bonds every now and again to to give away. To give back, yeah. That's awfully nice of him. And yeah, so now brings us to our song of the week. So playing off from last week's song, this one's gonna be Magic Magic Magic. It's the music track that is unlocked during the Tower of Life quest. And composed by Adam Bond. Yep. The creator of Old School Bonds. Mm-hmm. Yep. Brother to James Bond. Yep. So that's pretty it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this song is a happier version of last week's songs, which was Creature Cruelty. One of my personal favorites. Yeah, that's about it. What a shit show this week was. And we got no April Fool's event from Jagex. Yep. It was a very unfunny prank they did on us. Damn it, Jagex. Yeah, did it again. Anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, next week, one twenty-eight. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Yeah, have a good one.
Thank you.